Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Redmen TV and your latest edition of Expert Insight. My name is Dan Club, and I will be your host today. I am joined, it's a pleasure to say, by Patrick Berger, the chief sports reporter for Sports One, who covers Buster Dortmund extensively. Patrick, thank you very much for joining me. How are you doing? Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, uh, I must say, Patrick Berger with a CK and not with a K because there are a lot of people uh, thinking I'm the former uh, Liverpool or the former Borussia Dortmund player, the Czech player. No, it's not me. <laughs> yeah. I think he was quite better than me. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you're allowed to say that. Yeah, it's an easy mistake to make when I say Patrick Berger. I think a lot of people will think. <laughs> That one, that one, knows. It's just I won't yeah. say it's just you because that would be unkind. It's a very special Patrick Berger, but not the one who used to play for Liverpool. Yeah, um, yeah. So we brought you here today <laughs> you. to speak about another very special footballer, of course, um, someone who, quite simply, you can't keep out of the news. He's constantly in the headlines. Every single day, you wake up to this news, that news. It's all about Jude Bellingham, his future, what happens next. So let's talk about it. Um, We'll start off, um, Patrick. In fact, before I get into sort of my question about what happens with his future, I'm going to ask you, how brilliant has he been since he got to Dortmund? Yeah, of course he was, or he is outrageous at the moment. To be honest, when he came, uh, it was in summer 2020. It was uh, during the corona pandemic and every everyone was uh, like the expert were telling, oh, Borussia Dortmund is paying... uh, Two or twenty-three million euro for a for a player who's uh, just uh, yeah seventeen years old. Uh, what kind of guy is it? Um, mm. I knew from some uh, uh, people around the Borussia Dortmund environment. They said, ah, I don't know if it's that clever to uh, pay such a huge amount for for a kid. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, just a few months uh, later, everyone was like, wow, what kind of player is it? He's so uh, like ambitious. He's so. Uh, self-confident, uh, so much self-confident and uh, it's just a top, top player and was one of the best transfers in the history of Borussia Dortmund so far, I would say. Yeah, I think it's hard to disagree with that. Yeah, and, and that's a very sort of high praise indeed because Borussia Dortmund have had a very good transfer record, you know, mainly bringing players in, Jaden Sancho, Erling Haaland, very yeah. successful there and then moving them on for a lot of profit, which I think is what a lot of people think will happen with Jude Bellingham. However, Recently, sporting director at Busher Dortmund, Sebastian Kale, I think I'm right in saying, or Kell, very much said he very much hopes to keep Jude Bellingham beyond this summer. Do you think that's possible? They, they do have still hope, uh, of course. If you are uh, talking with Aidan Terzic, the the player, uh, the, the the manager, who has a very very uh, deep contact uh, to to Jude and his family, Sebastian Kale, uh, Hans Joachim Watzke, the CEO of Borussia Dortmund. They all have a bit like hope because uh, Jude fits very good in in this team in this squad. He is like the third or, or turned to the uh, third captain in the Borussia Dortmund squad after Marco Reus and Mats Hummels uh, for for a young player. It's, I think it's a big honor, uh, and he knows uh, how to how to handle with this uh, arm wrist when he wears it in the mm-hmm. in the matches. So um, yeah, they they do have still a, a bit hope because I would I would say. He fits very good in this environment. Dortmund is like a city you compare uh, to Birmingham. It's like a it's like a worker city uh, with a lot of industry, uh, rough people. I would say, um, uh, with with big heart, and uh, he he loves the fans and he loves the he loves the club. And uh, I would say he sees uh, right now in the moment that uh, something is going on at the Borussia Dortmund uh, squad. Something is uh, growing on. Uh, they they had a good result against. Uh, Against Chelsea in the first match. Um, now we will see uh, what what what's gonna happen in London. But uh, um, the 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 title race in the Bundesliga, it's it's like open. Uh, they they do have yeah. the the big match ahead on the on the first of April against Bayern Munich. Um, but uh, they still has the chance to win a title after 2012 in the Bundesliga. And uh, mm-hmm. I think this is a big big aim of Jude Bellingham as well. And I think uh, yeah, also like with the. With the aim to win the uh, the cup, the DFB Cup again, I think this is a big, big aim, and uh, they still have chances. They are very slightly, I would say, or very low, but uh, they are there. Yeah, it's it's no surprise that they'd want to keep Jude Bellingham and they'd hope to keep Jude Bellingham, like you say. And it might be the perfect way to sign off potentially if they do win the Bundesliga, potentially go deep in the Champions League, win another a cup, like you say. Who knows? But 
I want to ask you then, uh, Patrick, is it possible, do you think, that he stays on his current deal, which I think expires in 2025, or will they have to give him a new contract? Potentially, which is something Dortmund do a lot, a contract with a release clause in it? Yeah, the thing is, he never said, or if you speak to someone uh, at his uh, direct environment, he never said that he desperately wants to leave Borussia Dortmund or he's unsatisfied with the situation. It was in the past, like for some players like Erling Haaland or Jaden Sancho or Pulisic or Dembele, uh, also Obama Young, they, they, uh, on one point they said, OK, now I'm too good for the club. I, I need to make definitely the next step. Uh, I don't have this feeling right now at the moment, I, I must say. But um, of course, he, he sees now for, for himself. He has now 22 caps in the in your national team at the three lines. I was uh, in, in Qatar as well at the World Cup. I saw some 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 England matches and he's one of the key players in, in such a top uh, squad. And uh, I would say he can play in every top team in, yeah. in, in Europe and he can have a big, big impact. So... Of course, Borussia Dortmund, they want to change like the philosophy a bit because uh, I used to say uh, they uh, lost a, a lot of players like mm-hmm. Dembele, like Pulisic. Like they, they need to rebuild the squad every new year, like with Sancho, with uh, Haaland. And um, this could be a very good example for some other players to, to show we are very strong. We can, we can keep the players. So um, <clears throat> this is the big, big uh, thing, a big work to do for Sebastian Kehl and, and Edin Terzic as well. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a plan to make him to a top, top earner at Borussia Dortmund, um, give him an annual salary of around 50 million euro. It's a, a, a huge amount. Mm-hmm. A Dortmund player never had this uh, salary. Marco Royce to compare, he, he is, uh, yeah, something like 12, 30 million uh, euro. So, uh, they they want to extend the contract from 2025 uh, to 2026, but and this is the point uh, uh, you mentioned. Um, I think when they try to do this, um, it, it's just working uh, out with with a release clause. That's the the only thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you mentioned sort of his hike in salary there. It's been a lot of report yeah. about his wages and what he's currently on and like how much more he'd be on if he went to Real Madrid, Liverpool, Paris Saint-Germain, any of these clubs. So it's no surprise that Dortmund would need to increase his salary if they were going to keep him. Um, just because you touched on it there, Patrick, I'll just sort of touch on that now. You mentioned sort of Dortmund, how good they've been at replacing these players and their policy, their model has been selling them on for a profit and getting the next one in. Are they already preparing for life after Jude Bellingham if it comes to that? Yeah, of course they they uh, do preparing. They, uh, as I said, they want to rebuild a, a, a new team uh, right now. They are at the um, uh, reveal, so um, they have some players in their mind. Uh, mm-hmm. For example, one is Daichi Kamada. I think he he's also on the list. It's quite interesting for you guys because I I heard that he's also one of the players on the list for for the FC Liverpool. But uh, he's uh, keen, as I'm told, uh, to move to Borussia Dortmund as a free agent. Um, he's Playing on a different position than uh, than Jude Bellingham, a very different uh, type of player. But uh, Mahmoud Dahoud is leaving uh, the club after six years, so uh, Kamada is one of the of the yeah one on one replacement, I would say. And mm-hmm. yeah, it's clear that they are looking for uh, for new players like uh, Manu Kone is also on the list. Uh, Mohamed Kudus is on the list. Uh, Enzo Lefe, a very good young player from FC Lorient. So they do have some players, but they have not the one to say, okay, if Jude is going, we go for that one uh, player. So they mm. they, they um, speak with the, with the parents, with the agents, with the players right now yeah. and they need to prepare. It's uh, I think it's, uh, yeah, usual business. Huh? Yeah, it's smart to do so. I think it's, that's definitely the case. Yeah, yeah. And, and some of the names you mentioned there have definitely been sort of linked with Liverpool loosely. Manu Kone included, uh, Munchen Gladbach player, of course. We, we've been linked. We've yeah. been linked to every midfielder, though, to be honest with you. So it's not. <laughs> it's not much of a surprise. You need them. You need the midfielders. Huh? I think yeah. a midfielder is too old right now at the moment. Huh? Yeah, it's too old. It's too yeah. a lot of things to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah you're dead right. Yeah. Um, we mentioned the release clause a moment ago, Patrick. Just sort of how, what sort of figure do you think we'd be talking about for that? I mean, does we spoke about this quite a lot recently. Does the Enzo Fernandez deal and just how much he went for in the end, does that have an impact for the likes of Dortmund? Looking at someone like Bellingham going, but if he's worth 110 million, do Bellingham's worth that amount of money? Yeah, of course. I I, I spoke to someone uh, who's in a high, high position at Borussia Dortmund. Um, 
And uh, he, he told me, when you have a look at the player you named uh, 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 from Argentina, who's now uh, go, uh, going to, to FC Chelsea for 121 million euro, uh, and also players like Usman Dembele, who went for around, around 149 or 45, it was, I guess, uh, yeah. with bonus payment to, to uh, Barcelona. So, of course, they say if players like this who are good, but not that good, or mm -hmm. like Jude Bellingham at this stage, Yeah, we want to have the money like 150 million euro. This is the uh, this is like the um, yeah the the amount they do want to have, and uh, it's not an easy situation because Borussia Dortmund is not uh, they they are very good with the financial situation. They are not in in uh, need to sell uh, uh, players right now at the moment, but they are on the stock market, and uh, if the top offer. Uh, uh, went in or, or going in like uh, 150 euro for a million euro for Jude Bellingham. Mm -hmm. Of course, people who invest in Borussia Dortmund, they would say, uh, uh, hey guys, what's going on? We we need to sell the players. So it's not an easy situation for Borussia Dortmund as every year. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, last few questions then, Patrick, before I let you go. I know you're waiting to go watch the under-19s there in Dortmund. Um Yeah, <laughs> Jude Bellingham has been billed as a top target for Liverpool, like he has many clubs. I mentioned some of the interested clubs before. Just want to ask you, having seen so much of him, obviously for Borussia, just how well suited. And of course, you've seen Jurgen Klopp teams a lot as well beforehand and at Liverpool. How well suited is Jude Bellingham to play under Jurgen Klopp? Yeah, of course, Jude, Jude is a big uh, admirer of uh, Jurgen Klopp and also on the outside, Jurgen Klopp uh, loves him. It's 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 the perfect uh, kind of player, uh, I would say, for uh, or to rebuild a new uh, squad, a new top midfield at at uh, FC Liverpool. Uh, a, a player, I think the fans would identify with him and... Uh, The, the the kind of playing because uh, I don't know if you know the uh, the the history um, um, beyond his uh, his number the 22 it's uh, he got it from uh, from Birmingham because mm -hmm. uh, the number four the number eight the number 10 if you plus yeah, plus yeah. plus you come to 22 so uh, because the people say uh, he's a number four he's a number six he's a number eight at 10 he can play everywhere so um, I, I would say he's perfect because he uh, uh, um, he's very dangerous. Uh, he make uh, goals. He uh, he's like uh, in a playmaker role, and he's able to to play the very int uh, intensive um, gegen pressing uh, uh, system of Jurgen Klopp. So I would mm -hmm. say it's a it's a perfect uh, or it would be a perfect fit. And the thing is, and I think this is uh, some some good uh, news for you guys. Um, what what I'm told or heard is that uh, Liverpool is still in the pole position. Front runners, they they are the the um, yeah the main target also for for Jude. There yeah. are some clubs like um, like like City and Real Madrid uh, as well in the race, but mm -hmm. um, he turned down uh, like uh, proposals from 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 Chelsea from uh, PSG for the summer because uh, for him. Uh, self, he's like more uh, looking into the Premier League as a next step. So FC Liverpool is is very very interesting for for him, of course. But um, we need to see where is the development going of FC Liverpool. And for me personally, I can't imagine, uh, to be honest, um, uh, to to see Jude, um, yeah, one year pl playing at the club, who is not taking part at the Champions League. So uh, we'll see. Yeah, we will see indeed. Jurgen Klopp was speaking recently, just today, about our top four chances and he's still confident that we can finish in the top four. And We want to finish in the top four for Champions League football, obviously, but also if it impacts Jude Bellingham coming to the club, then it's an even bigger deal. But like you say, definitely delighted yeah. to hear that we're in pole position still and certainly definitely still in the race. That's the main thing for now. Um, just finally then, Patrick, before I do let you go, If it is going to be that 150 million euro figure that you've spoken about, as things stand, you mentioned Liverpool are in pole position. In your opinion, what do you see as the most likely outcome? Does he stay at Dortmund or does he come to Liverpool, maybe Manchester City? What do you see happening? Yeah, yeah, I would say, to be honest, as I said, it all stands and falls with the with the uh, qualification for the for the Champions League. Um, I don't know. Maybe if they if they reach the Europa League, uh, it could be a year where Judah saying, "Okay, if I am the key player to rebuild yeah. a new squad, to be the, the the face of the new club or of the new philosophy, uh, uh, why not?" But but you guys need to play in in, in Europe, mm -hmm. and um, I would say uh, for you it would be better if Borussia Dortmund would would struggle at the moment, but they are not doing. They they had nine uh, nine uh, matches in this year and nine yeah. uh, wins because. If Jude 
I would say if Jude has still the feeling that he can reach something with Borussia Dortmund, and they are still on the top and competing with Bayern, competing in the Champions League, competing in uh, the, the German Cup, I would say there's still a small chance for Borussia Dortmund that he stays for one more year and mm-hmm. make them the step one year later to to Liverpool. But at the moment, if you if you ask me, I would say it's 60% that he's going to join uh, Liverpool and 40% that he stays in, in Dortmund for one more year. We see. Yeah, I like I like those odds, Patrick. You could you can come on again after that. Yeah, fingers crossed. That you yeah, are cool. Right. Yeah, you are right after that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean we need we need Champions League, like I say already, regardless of Jude Bellingham. But I am desperate for us to sign Jude Bellingham. Like cards on the table, absolutely desperate for it. Um, but yeah, Patrick, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. I will let you go and watch the under 19s now. Um, yeah, thank you very much for joining me. Just let the listeners and the viewers know where they can find your Twitter and your work. Generally speaking, mate. Yeah, yeah, you you find me you find me as you know on on, on Twitter, uh, uh, Burger uh, PJ, and and also on on Instagram. And I now new on TikTok. It's a it's a new thing for me uh, because my my young cousins they are uh, big fans of of TikTok, and they, they said to me, hey. Send us some videos. We do the shit for you. And I said, okay, guys, it's a good idea. So <laughs> new thing for me also. <laughs> oh, happy days. But we'll get you some followers on the back of this. Make sure you go check out yeah, Patrick cool. on TikTok. Yeah, Great. make sure you do that. His cousins will box it off for you. Um, brilliant, mate. <laughs> happy days. Yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. Um, and it's been a pleasure. That has been all for this episode of Expert Insight. And I will speak to you all again soon. See you later. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed the show and getting that little bit more of insight into Liverpool's chances of signing Jude Bellingham. If you did, head over to Redmen Plus now and sign up as a Club Captain monthly subscriber. And if you use the code EXPERT, you will get your first month for just £1. And you'll see me speaking to the likes of Florian Plettenberg, Valentina Maseri and former Liverpool midfielder Bolo Zenden, as well as a host of other boss people in their industries, plus all the other amazing content that we do. So go over there and get it done. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed that show. I'm sure you did. If you want even more amazing Red Men content in your ears or in your eyes, come and join us over on redmenplus.com. We've got absolutely amazing interviews, features, documentaries, and even more of the shows like you've just watched. So yeah, head on over to redmenplus.com and become a Red Men Plus club captain or club legend. I promise you won't regret it.